Welcome to another weekend message. I'm Pastor Bill Thomas. Uh, I serve at Hereford Faith and Life Church in Moncton, Maryland. And if you are in our neighborhood on a Sunday morning, we worship live at uh, 10 o'clock at our Family Life Center. We practice social distancing, masks are required. We have lots of PPE materials, sand, hand sanitizers, wipes. We, we've got it all. Uh, our motto is we can do it better than Walmart. And we have been worshiping now since uh, the end of July inside. And so we're, we, we've got it down. We defog uh, with disinfectant after every service. And so it's a very, very safe place to come. And uh, But we're also offering this because we have a number of our folks who right now are not ready to come back. Maybe they can't even come back. So uh, we're glad that you're a part of this. We consider you part of our church family. And I know there's folks watching from uh, some several states, and uh, we even have some viewers uh, in Europe. And we're, so, we're just so glad you're here. We want to open God's word, and we want to spend this time in the presence of the Holy Spirit together, listening to what God has to share for us. And we, we want to, at the end of the message, be different people, be more like Jesus, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Before we start the message, though, I want to share something I'm really excited about that's going to be coming up uh, in during our Lenten season. And uh, that Lenten season is really coming quicker than you can imagine. Uh, it's just uh, uh, maybe three or four weeks away. And uh, so I want us to take a look at one of the things we're going to do here. We're going to participate in a journey together called 40 Days of Prayer. It's a campaign uh, written by Rick Warren, and uh, we, we had a great one with 40 Days of Purpose. This is something I think that every one of us can use. As I was thinking, what area in my life would I really, really want to grow in in my faith? I didn't have to think very long. It's prayer. You know, if you read the, the, the Bible, the great men and women that God used throughout the scripture were always uh, people of prayer. Uh, Jesus himself. Uh, which just was a master of prayer. He would wake up early in the morning, uh, go out before the sunrise and pray, sometimes late at night. His disciples were so, so amazed at his prayer life. They asked him one question, not, Lord, how do you heal the sick? Or Lord, how can we preach better? They just said, Lord, teach us to pray. If you look at the great uh, autobiographies and biographies of people that God has used over these generations of Christianity, there's a common theme. They were all people of prayer. So my goal in this is that we not only become better prayer warriors, but that we become a church that prays, that we pray down the power of heaven, and that we pray and see lives change, see our own life change. What you need to do to participate is go to pastors.com, that's Rick Warren's uh, website, and get this book. It's the 40-day prayer workbook, and it's a great book. It's This, this is not all about theory. This is about practice. We're going to be doing a lot of praying each day. There'll be a small uh, scripture verse, short scripture, verse, and then we will uh, have prayer prompts, places where we can uh, write notes from our Sunday teachings and our Wednesday gatherings. We're going to be gathering midweek to put into practice what we're learning. So please, want to know more about it, go to our website, www.hereford, H-E-R-E-F-O-R-D, U-M-C, Dot com. Be more information there. Make sure you're on our email list and quickly go to pastors.com and get your workbook because you know how shipping is a, a little uh, crazy these COVID days. And uh, I can understand that. Before we get started with today's message, would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you for your love and grace. And we are just so grateful for this opportunity to be here together in your presence. And Lord, even though we're not physically uh, together, we know that our hearts are united through the Holy Spirit. God, we pray for those who are sick, especially those who are struggling with COVID. Lord, heal their bodies. Those people that are feeling discouraged, encourage them, Lord. Those who are just feeling blue, Lord, just lift them up. And Lord, we thank you that you are working in the midst of our nation and world. <clears throat> it looks chaotic, but we know, Lord, that you're sovereign. You're a sovereign God. You put whom you want in places of leadership. And we just are praying for peace and healing in our nation. And most of all, God, we just pray for revival. Would you send your Holy Spirit with power 
and just unite our hearts aflame in love with your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we know that Jesus is the answer for our world today. He's our answer too for our lives. We pray in his mighty name. Amen. Well, we are on a mission here. We are doing a series of messages called Matters of the Heart, and we're looking really at uh, checking up our heart. You know, a lot of us said that this year, 2021, we want to be healthier, and part of that is getting a good checkup and always get your heart checked. Well, we need to do the same thing with our spiritual life, and so we're looking at a series of diagnostic questions to make sure that our spiritual heart, that center of our being, where where God renews and remakes when we give our lives to Jesus Christ. The Bible says we get a new heart fashioned after his heart, and it's tender, and it's soft, and it's pliable, and God is like the potter who, who molds us and makes us into the image of Jesus Christ. But, you know, over time, because of hurts and disappointments, uh, because of troubles and trials, our, our hearts can grow cold. Our hearts can grow hard, and they can be tough. And uh, that's not a good spiritual heart, man. That's not where you want to be. So let me ask you some of these spiritual diagnostic questions. And they are on our website, these messages before. This is just review. And then we'll go into a new one uh, in a moment. Let me ask you this one. Here it is. Can you feel deep emotions? It's really important. You know, the first thing that really happens when your heart begins to get sick and get cold and get hard is that you drop out of your emotions. Your emotions begin to shut down. It, it, your heart is starting to get tough. And, and so you don't feel things deeply. Uh, everyone's crying at the Hallmark sad movie and you're just sitting there. What's going on? Or there's something really deep and rich and laughing and you just, you just like, ah, it's not funny to me. And, and you just begin to shut down. And uh, God doesn't want you living like that. God gave you emotions. We're made in his image. He has emotions. So it's important that you check on your emotions. Are you feeling things deeply? Especially feeling the things that moves God's heart. When God loves something, he loves it deeply and passionately. We should have that same love, passionately, expressive. I think of worship. You know, that, that's a place where we should be expressive and feeling the presence of God deeply. God loves emotions because he has them and he gave them to us as a gift. So check on that. Are you feeling deep emotions? The second thing is you might have to ask yourself this diagnostic question. Are you present in the moments of each day? You and I know that, that we can be physically in a room, but, but totally checked out. You know, we're not listening. We're, we're, we're just a million miles away. And God doesn't want us to live that way. That's a sign of a sick spiritual heart. When you find yourself zoning out more and more, your kids are sharing the, what they, they learned, uh, you know, at school online and, and you're not even listening. And uh, as I shared in the message, you sometimes, you know, the, the most scariest question a husband can be asked by a wife is, hey, honey, what did I just say to you? Because they know we were watching TV. We were, we were just not present. That's a spiritual problem. So ask that to yourself. Am I present? Because that's really important. Jesus was present with people. He never zoned out. He always had time to listen and care. Here's one you might not think of, but it's a good question to ask. Are you having fun yet? Hey, listen, Jesus came to give us abundant life, life to its fullest, overflowing with joy. And a healthy heart feels that joy and expresses that joy. Listen, even in the midst of trials and troubles, we can have this joy. We can have a joyful attitude because, listen, we know that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. We know that this world's not our home. We're pilgrims on a journey through this world. Our home is in heaven. And even just knowing that can keep you joyful during hard times. But listen, if your heart's sick, if, if your heart is growing uh, cold and, and tough, boy, we, we get so focused uh, on the problems of this world that, that we forget that Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life in its fullest abundance. So make sure 
that you're enjoying life because that's the way God designed you. In fact, it's a great witness. If you're not having fun and you're trying to share Christ, nobody wants what you want, right? You might as well be joyful and happy, and then people find you contagious. Here's another question. How do you feel about people? How do you feel about people? Listen, if I were to take a, a $20 bill and, and, and it was crumbled and dirty and pieces torn out of it, and how much is it worth? Well, you'd say, Bill, it's worth $20. Well, you know what? People in life get hurt. They get dirty. They get crumbled. Addictions, poor choices. It all adds up. And, and sometimes people are just so hard to love. And you know your heart is starting to grow sick, starting to grow cold and hard. When you stop looking at people the way God looks at people, when people become a nuisance, when people become a bother, when people interrupt your life, you, you see every phone call is an interruption to your plans and, it's, and you're just put out about it. You know, sometimes, in fact, oftentimes, those are really divine opportunities planned by God for you to share your faith and your life of Jesus Christ with that neighbor. Now, here's the new diagnostic question for today. And, and I'm going to share just right here. I want you to do something for me. It's, it, the question is, who's on first? Who or what has first place in your heart? I'm going to ask you in just a minute, after I give you these directions, to pause this YouTube video and go back up to YouTube and search for this video. Write in Abbott, A-B-O-T-T, -T, and Costello, C-O-S-T-E-L-L-O. Abbott and Costello, it was a comedian act back in the 40s, and write Abbott and Costello, who's on first, all right? And before you listen to the rest of this message, I want you to watch that video, all right? Who's on first? So do that now, and we'll check in when you come back. Well, okay, now I hope you had that time to see it. We're going to show that video uh, a Sunday live during worship, but can you relate to that comedy routine? You know, is, is that amazing, right? Uh, you know, again, uh, for those of you who, who didn't have the, the, the capability of going back to YouTube and looking at it, uh, Abbott and Costello, they, they're comedians, and one pretends that they're, they're a manager of a team. The other wants to know the people on the baseball team. It's, it's all about baseball. And so the, the Abbott says, you know, I, I want to know the players, the team. What's the names of the people in your infield? And uh, Costello says, well, you know, they give uh, crazy names to baseball players these days, you know. And he lists a bunch of them. He says, okay, so here's my infield. Who is on first? What is on second? And I don't know is on third. And Abbott says, okay, well, yeah, but those aren't. What's the name of the person playing first base? He says, no, who's on first? He says, well, that's what I asked you. Who's on first? Costello says, that's right. Who's on first? He says, no, what's the name of the man on first? And I said, no, what's the name on second? Who's on first? And it goes on and on. And please make sure you watch that. But life can get like that. It's so confusing. And when our life is confused, that means our heart's priorities are jumbled. And it's a symptom of a really serious condition that needs immediate attention because we're not meant to go through this life juggling priorities, constantly uh, vacillating between what's most important to us at this moment might be different than next moment. One moment's Christ, next moment it's family, next moment it's our career, and maybe our hobbies, maybe we, we begin to juggle our ministries. And when we begin to juggle these priorities, life gets hard and that hardens our hearts helps our, our house grow, our, our heart grow cold. Juggling is hard. I wonder if there's anybody out there that can juggle, all right? I can't juggle very well, but I can juggle one ball, all right? I can toss it up and catch it. Well, this one ball is Jesus, all right? And Jesus says, listen, I, I, I want to be first and always first. But then all of a sudden, another ball comes up. That's a family. Well, wow. Well, Jesus needs to be first, but family is important. So we find ourselves juggling the, the, these priorities, but, but that's not the only priorities we have. 
we have our career and work and and now we're well jesus but jesus needs to be but now we're tossing these things uh, and at any moment our family needs to come first I, and that's not all there's there's more there's more there, there, there's there's dozens and dozens of priorities and we're juggling them and and it just makes life tough they're all screaming i'm first i'm first put me first and it's tough and when our heart starts to live in this juggled environment this priorities in our heart constantly changing our hearts get calloused they get tough they get cold and we become confused as to what and who should have the full attention of our heart. Usually it's the ball that's screaming at you at the time. The roof needs repaired or the, the, the car needs repaired. Or, or they're laying off people at work. I mean, it just never ends. Well, God's word tells us that life is not to be confused like that. Life is not a juggling routine that Jesus Christ should be number one in our hearts alone. Him only, always, and forever. So the answer to the question, who's on first, is Jesus. Jesus is on first. Jesus is my top priority. He's my consuming passion. He's the priority of my heart. So who's on first in your heart? If the Holy Spirit were to take a spiritual MRI of your heart, what or who would he see sitting on the throne of your heart ruling your life? What's your number one priority? Would he see your career? Would he see your family? Would he see your fantasy football league? Would he see your spouse? Maybe your kids or grandchildren? Would he see your trophies and awards? How about your bank account, your golf clubs, your motorcycle, your fishing rods, right? It could go on and on. It might even be a ministry in the church. Who's on first? What's on second? I don't know is on third. And that's the way most people live their lives, including some Christians. Most people, even a lot of Christians, live their lives throwing balls up in the air, hoping to at least be able to catch a few of them. Keep a few things in order, but what happens is important things drop to the floor. Important things get overseen. It's a miserable way to live, and it hardens our hearts towards God and towards people. Now, a healthy heart, let's talk about that. A healthy heart is where priorities are kept in God's order of importance. A healthy heart knows without a doubt or hesitation who's on first. The healthy heart has priorities in order and to be really healthy, the way God desires us to be and plan for us to be requires Jesus Christ to be smack dab number one. That's it. All by himself. One ball. Jesus. Right there, sitting on the throne of our heart and our life. He's our CEO. He's our king. He's our Lord. He's our master without question or hesitation, you should be able to answer the question, who's on first? Jesus Christ. And if we want a vibrant spiritual heart and life, we have to keep him number one, the treasure of our heart, not a treasure, but the treasure. Jesus taught this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. He said, no one can serve two masters. For you'll hate one and love the other or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot have two ultimate masters. You can't have three. You can't have four. You can't have a dozen. Jockeying for top place, top priority. It's either God or career. It's either God or sports. It's either God or family. Now, listen carefully what I'm saying here, what Jesus is teaching. It's not sin. And it's not wrong to make your family a priority or your career a priority or your ministry and mission for the church a priority. It becomes wrong when they get out of order and begin to compete and fight for first place in our lives. See, if Jesus is first, everything else falls in right place. You say, well, Bill, how, how could you say that? Well, 
honestly, I didn't say it. Jesus did. He said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that you worry about, all these things you're juggling, will find their place. We'll come back to that verse in a second. You know what else Jesus said? It's probably one of the most troubling uh, passages in the scripture. It's found in Luke chapter 14, verse 26. Jesus said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Well, Jesus isn't saying we're to hate our family or our spouse or our kids, because that's the strongest human love that there is, this love for family. What Jesus is saying, though, if you put this love on a chart and compared our love for family with what our love for God should be, our love for family would look like hate compared to our consuming love for God. The New Living Translation, which is a paraphrase, paraphrases that verse this way, and it makes more sense. It's easier to understand. If you want to be my follower, you must love me more than your own father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters. Yes, more than your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. So what Jesus is saying, no, we're to love our mom and dad. We're to love our wife and kids, brothers and sisters. We're to love our life. But we must love Jesus so much more that if we were to rank those loves on a chart, Jesus would be sky high, and our love, our strongest human love, would look like hate. See, our hearts grow calloused and tough and hard when we give anything or anybody first place in our heart other than Jesus Christ. Now, I want to share a great tool that I've learned with you, uh, learned before. Uh, It comes from Campus Crusade for Christ, and it's a great tool for sharing your faith. It's also a great tool for doing this spiritual heart checkup for who's on first. First thing you want to do is just draw a big circle. And that's my life. If you're sharing with a friend, say, this is your life. And then in the middle of that circle, draw a stick figure throne. I got one from the the internet, a cliff. And that throne represents your heart. All right. And then you've got all these things about life, yourself, your family, career, house, college, debt, whatever it is. You also have a cross. That cross represents Jesus Christ. Now, what you do is you ask your friend, where would you put that cross in your life? Well, listen, if the person isn't a believer, they might put that cross outside of the circle of their life, right? If you're talking to a Christian, they might put that cross somewhere in the circle but not necessarily seated in the throne, first place in their life. So in this tool, what you need to ask is, where is Jesus in your life? If you put the cross outside the circle, then you need to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ and do that by praying, realizing that you're a sinner and you're separated from God, but because Jesus died on a cross from you, for, for you, you can ask him into your life and you can be made new, get a new heart, a new life, a new creation in Christ, the Bible says. And now he's in your life. But to really know that your heart is spiritually healthy and vibrant, Jesus needs to be on the throne of your life. He needs to sit there at the very center of your heart. Number one, alone not jockeying with other things for first place, but everyone and everything else is there beneath the cross of Jesus. Because remember, again, Matthew chapter 6, 33, here's the neat thing. If we put Jesus first, everything else will fall in place. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all right? So Dr. Jesus is asking us this morning, uh, who's on first? Who's first place? Who has the number one spot in your heart? Not your, you're not juggling, but who has one first place? Now, let me read the rest of this verse in context about seeking first. It's found, again, in Matthew chapter 6. But I'm going to start now at verse 25. Therefore, I say to you, this is Jesus, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, nor about your body or what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? 
For look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? Why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek, but your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So what's, what's Jesus saying? He's saying all the stuff, all the tennis balls, your life, your career, college, uh, uh, you know, hobbies, uh, uh, spouse, family, all these things that are jockeying for first place. He says, listen, all the things that we worry about, all the things we're anxious about. He says, listen, if you will just put Jesus Christ first, settle that in your heart, put him on the throne of your life and leave him there. Don't take him off and climb back up on, but leave him there. He said, listen, I will take care of everything else. You won't have a worry about what you wear, what you eat, career, family, life. He says, if you put me first, everything else will be added to you. Now, that is a great promise that I just, I strongly encourage. There's some of you right now, you're just really, really worried and you're anxious. You, you don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. Listen, make sure Jesus Christ is first. And if you honor him in first place, prioritize him in first place. And don't, again, don't take him off that throne. Don't climb back up there. Try to run your own life. Don't put anything up. But if you put Jesus there, I will guarantee you that God will take care of you. Everything you need, God will provide. So folks, it's so important that we do this and we do it quickly because this is a serious condition because life is so temporary, isn't it? I, I mean, it is short compared to eternity and, and we don't have, uh, we don't know what time we have to get this right, to put Jesus first. You really get, a shot at life to make a difference. And, and if we want our life to count on this earth, we've got to put Jesus Christ first in our life. See, see, Jesus comes and says, you know, if you put me first in my life, in your life, and, and, and in my kingdom first in your, your priorities, all these things you worry about, all these things that detour you from fully following me and, and enjoying life and finding that abundant life, Keep me first, and I'll make sure all these things you worry about would be taken care of. Well, here's what he's saying. This is an invitation. If you're trying to struggle, uh, you know, juggling, he said, put, put all the balls down. Listen, you just keep this one ball, me, first in life. I'll do all the juggling. I'll make sure everything else works and fits according to my will for your good and for my glory. So listen, can I say something to you, friends? Stop juggling. Lay all the tennis balls of your life down at the feet of Jesus and put him first. Make him the passion of your life. Uh, make him the, the, the focus of your life. And, and God promises if you, we do this, he will see that everything else, all the stuff we juggle, all the stuff we worry about, will fall in place. And we can know the peace of God that passes understanding and we can live a life of purpose in the will and the plan of God. Isn't that amazing? So listen, it's surgery time, right? It's surgery time. Let, let's quiet ourselves before the Lord. Let's ask Dr. Jesus to, to open our hearts and do a work in us, a transforming work that will change our lives. Let's pray. First, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for climbing up into the throne of our life and thinking that we rule. Forgive us for not putting you first and keeping you there. Forgive us for putting other things where you belong. Lord, we want you more than anything else. We want you and you alone 
to be on the throne of our heart. Heal our hearts, God. Make them tender again and soft and pliable in your hands so that we might be molded into your image. And we know, God, if we have you first in all things, you'll do that. Lord, we want you to live and rule from that throne in our hearts we, over our entire life. Whatever it is, all the things that we worry and juggle, career, family, home, we want you to rule. You be Lord. Fill that place with your love and grace and power. And Lord, we, we just give you our hearts. And with the help of your Holy Spirit, we are and forever will make you number one in our lives. You are number one, our first and top priority, always and always. And help us live that way for you now and forevermore. For we ask this in Jesus' precious, precious name. Amen. Well, thank you guys. Man, I hope you uh, uh, got something out of today because this is critical. So many things can jockey for first place in our lives, even ourselves. I know a lot of times, you know, I gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ when I was a sophomore in college. Uh, but since that time, he's not always been on the, on the throne of my heart. Many times I'll just say, excuse me, Lord, would you get down? I want to run my life. And every time I've done that, it's been misery, right? It it's just hasn't worked. And, and God knows that. And so while we're juggling life, God says, hey, you, do you want peace in your heart? Do you want to find my plan and purpose? Put my son Jesus there and let him stay there. So I pray that you've done that today. You, you, you've gotten your heart set and straight. Jesus is reigning on your heart. And I want to hear all the good things that come from that. Really, shoot me an email. Uh, let me know what changes have happened in your life since you made Jesus Christ the very top priority of your life and you've refused now to juggle those priorities. They are all going to be now at the feet of Jesus and he alone on the throne of your heart. Will the Lord bless you and keep you? May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace, the peace that only God can give, peace that passes understanding. Amen. In the name of Jesus, have a great, great day and a great, great week. I'll see you next week again. God bless you.